So this is a slightly different kind of video than we usually do. We're going to talk tech, and I hope it's something that you learn from, something that makes you think, but I hope you never have to use it. So over the weekend, an incident came to my attention, and it happened in a Midwest uh, drag strip, and there was an incident involving a race car that uh, rolled in the lights and ended up on its roof or on its side, still not clear about that, and uh, the car caught fire. And there wasn't a good outcome from this incident. Um, and I don't really know many de details beyond that. But it got me thinking, and I'm like, you know, when I heard the details of this accident, the very first thing that I thought of was the tank probably wasn't vented correctly, or precautions weren't taken when venting the tank. Or as part of the incident, the tank vent became dislodged or, or broken or ripped or, or something. I don't know. I don't know the details. I don't pretend to know the details. But what I do know is that there is a real lack of, uh, of understanding as far as fuel cell, fuel tank safety when it comes to uh, cars being in anything but the normal upright position. If you go to the NHRA rule book, and you go just just the tech basic tech for fuel system venting and all it says is that the tank or the cell needs to be vented outside the car but that's as far as it goes it doesn't really give you any details now the position of the fuel cell vent is extremely important because in the event of an accident and where you would actually you know where, where the cell earns its keep if it's not vented properly, the fuel can just freely pour out of it, and there's no way to stop it. You know, when a car goes upside down, right away the pumps go dry because it, it, it can't pump. The, the, the fuel is being picked up from the bottom of the tank, so the pump can't pick up and send pressurized fuel through the system. So that's not really an issue. You'll get a, you know, fuel, a fuel line will rip in front of the car, or whatever it happens to be, and you'll get a small amount of fuel that will cause a fire, but it's a relatively small, manageable fire. It, it's not that big a deal. But when you've got a car upside down and the fuel is able to freely pour from the tank because of a bad vent or, or a non-vented system, where, well, you know, you don't stop that. And a gallon, two gallons, you know, if a car could be upside down for two, three, four, five minutes before a driver could be extricated for whatever reason, um, well, you could put a lot of fuel on the ground in that period of time and not only endangering the driver, but everybody around them. And before I, get, before I get any further with this, I just want to say something here because right away, a lot of you guys are like, well, my car is slow, you know, so I don't really have to worry about that. I'm not going to go upside down, you know, at, at, in the lights, whatever it is. Listen, in all my years of doing this stuff, I have seen some truly crazy stuff. And one incident that always sticks in my mind happened at Atco, which actually recently closed this week for good. You know, and it was one of my favorite tracks. Um, but this happened at Atco probably 25 years ago. And it was just during, during like a uh, test and tune, time trials. And it was a, a Ford Maverick. And the car, street car, like a 12 second car, right? Typical. You know, you wouldn't pay attention to this thing. It's just another car in the crowd. Well, this thing goes out about 300 feet or so. So maybe it's going 40, 50 miles an hour, whatever it happens to be, okay? And it takes a hard turn, just out of the blue, it takes a hard turn and heads right, center punches the, the guardrail, guardwall. The car rolls over and it rolls over the guardrail, guardwall, it's between the stands, the end of the stands, and the track, and it's upside down. It was the craziest thing. You don't expect a car like that to, you know. So it can happen to anybody, anytime. That's why we have things like roll bars in 11-second cars. You don't have to be going lightning fast to end up upside down or on your side. So let's talk about fuel tank venting, because this is really the, the crux of it. Like I said, there is no good information or tech guidelines as far as fuel tank venting.
And there are so many different tanks, different cells, different styles of fuel system that it's impossible to cover them all in one shot here. But give you the idea and then you can look at your car and you can look at your system and make sure that you've at least got these, these bases covered in however you would do it on your car. So, this is the cell in my car here, and this is the vent line. So, when a car is upside down, obviously the fuel is against the top here. And so, if there isn't some way to stop the fuel, or, a, or a, a vent line that ends in a position that's not above the level of, level of the fuel, it's just going to pour out. So let's just say, for example, instead of this line like I have here going down to the trunk floor of the car, let's say it vents to the back over here. Well, depending on the position of upset of the car, that fuel can still freely flow out of the vent line. So you want a couple of, there's a couple of things. The first is that a rollover valve. A rollover valve is something that will prevent the fuel. It'll allow the tank to vent normally, so air will come in to displace the fuel it's leaving. You won't have any starvation issues. But if the tank is upside down or on its side or fuel pushes against it, it'll shut off the flow of fuel through the vent. And the best place to have them is like right here, screwed into the, into the top of the cell. There are rollover devices, rollover valves to fit every possible application. And you shouldn't, if you've got a, a car that's going to see competition uh, or, or the possibility of the thing ending up on its side or upside down, a rollover valve is something you need to look into. And like I said, they come in all shapes and sizes and they come in designs that work with every type of fuel system there is. So a rollover valve should be number one. Now, the second thing is that the line, your vent line, should always be anchored or secured at some point under the level of fuel in the tank. So in this case, we have our vent line that goes below the floor of the tank here, and I've got it through the trunk floor. Now, I've got this thing relatively loose, so it can move around, it can flop around, there's plenty of extra here. Because in the event of an accident, you don't know how the back of the car is gonna become distorted. You know, the trunk floor could crumple or, or, or just pull away, the cell could rip away. You want to have enough slack here that no matter what happens, the line is going to stay intact. Where it's, the, the integrity of the line isn't going to be, the position of it isn't going to be disturbed. Now, also on this line, I've got it going through a hole in the floor of the trunk, but it's also anchored in such a way that it can't pull through. Because again, you don't know how an incident is going to disturb the, the structure of the car. So having this line to where no matter what happens, it can't pull through. There's, there's, a, there's a, a bulkhead connector underneath there. And, it, and I, didn't use, I didn't use one that's tightened against the floor of the car because I want this movement. I want it to be free enough so that it, it's not gonna break loose, you know, because an aluminum fitting will just snap under the right circumstances. So by giving it this amount of free play, if this thing is upside down and the car is just crumpled, it, 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 gets something hit in the, it gets hit in the back and all of this is messed up, well, it's not going to snap the fitting off and allow this line to just spray fuel around. Because again, when this thing is upside down, if you got two gallons, three gallons, however many gallons you got in your cell, it's all trying to get out that line. So your first line of protection is a rollover valve. Your second line of protection is a line, a, a good line, like a braided line that isn't going to be disturbed or, or ripped during this accident. And you want to have it anchored in such a way so that it will always remain under the, under the floor, under the bottom of the tank. All right. Now, th there are some people that will put loops in here, but the loop is not to keep the fuel from pouring out upside down. The loop is there so that under acceleration or deceleration, the fuel doesn't get sloshed out of the vent line. That's why you would put a loop there, but the loop won't do you any good if the thing is upside down. It it's still going to flow. So, I know, it's, it's simple, basic stuff. But you just, you never know. You know, you could be that car that breaks a right ear hose or 
pushes out a freeze plug. You know, a slow car. You get the antifreeze under the tires. There's no control on this thing. You're going to dance with Mr. Guardwell, and there's a chance you end up upside down. And you don't know what's in the other lane. You may have a just a slow a 13 to 12 second car, and you're just minding your own business. And here comes an out of control something or other, and the next thing you know, you're upside down. You want to make sure. You want to really make sure that in the event that the car is no longer upright, that there's no way for the fuel to just freely flow from the cell. All right, so I, I hope you got something out of that. I hope it got the wheels turning, and I hope it's something, sincerely hope it's something that you never have to use. I'll see you tomorrow.